Hello and good afternoon everybody and welcome to session on engineering graphics with me Yash Chawla from Parul Institute of Engineering and Technology Vadodara. So now we have come to the last three chapters of our engineering graphics syllabus and today we are going to discuss about development of surfaces. Up till last uh, in the last session we discussed sections of solid and uh, different uh, methods how sections are created. Today we are going to know what is the basic what is basic uh, development of surfaces that are there there are various surfaces that are available with us so i have a few equipments with me as you can see it's christmas time so this is uh, what i have brought a few uh, chocolates dairy milk and pastries so with all these items we are going to today know how these development of surfaces application are there in our day to day life so let's start with uh, what we are going to have today yeah so today we are going to first discuss the concept of development of uh, different surfaces that are available with us then we are going to go on to parallel line development and radial line development these are the two different types of developments that we uh, encounter in our engineering and our day to day life and thereafter we'll go to solve examples so we'll uh, solve six examples today in two sessions that is there uh, from till 2 o'clock so let's first understand that what is the basic concept of development of surfaces now basic theory is like development refers to complete surface of solid now whenever there is a 3d object whenever we have a 3d object for example uh, this is a 3d object that i have this is as, as you can see it's a cone now for developing this kind of a surface we require a 2d material say a plane now a plane with a specific shape can be molded into this 3d object as we will i'll show you what uh, particular shape will it uh, make so it's just like craft uh, when in the when we were in lower classes uh, first standard second standard we were given marble papers and using that marble paper we used to create different either we used to create boats and we used to uh, make origamis and those kind of things so it is just like craft which has been taught to us in lower standards the only thing is that in craft what we used to do is we had a surface that is a plane that is marble paper which was given to us and we used to mold that into the boats or into any other shape that we want now here in development of surface it, the method is totally opposite to what we used to do in our uh, craft class here we will be having that 3d object and we will have to develop a surface of the 2d uh, uh, 2d plane which actually creates that 3d object for us when we are uh, using it what are uh, what is its importance see in engineering what en engineering uh, production what happens is that if you want to produce say a uh, a pipeline then we don't have uh, we are not going to take a shaft we are not going to have a shaft and we are going to uh, rim it from inside and make it hollow what we are going to do is we are going to take a sheet and we are going to roll it and we are going to make it a uh, this uh, pipe pipeline so for these kind of surface we should know that what can, what should be its circumference so that finally when the pipeline is made we get our specific diameter another another uh, if you talk about more examples uh, or more uh, applications we are having applications in automobile industries we can see that automobiles are 3d they have height they have breadth and they have length uh, have you imagined uh, that how does that shape is how do we get that shape there is a inner frame on which there are uh, foils or say sheets of uh, metal or carbon fiber which are uh, molded on top of them or not should be molded they are bent and they are shaped on top of the frame and that is how the automobile comes into uh, the shape that it has uh, when we see it on the road similarly with the aircrafts aircrafts is ho hollow from inside just like a cylinder if you consider a cylinder it is having a, a circumference of body or say face which is there and the both m are empty so some kind of sh uh, sh that shape then ship building again if you want to give a, it's ship building is just like making a boat out of that uh, marble paper that we had and packaging yeah we can i'll show you uh, the best example of packaging using this dairy milk uh, material that i have so let's get on this is the first example that we show okay we all know that this is a th this is having a chocolate inside right now it's not having i have already ate it away so this is this is empty right now so how do you think that this shape has come into context 
how that dairy milk is inserted inside and how this has been wrapped so this is an example of packaging what happens is that i'll first unpack it and then i'll show you that how it is packed here i have already torn this so what i'm going to do is i've torn this now what next i'm going to do is i'm going to peel this off this way slowly so this is done now from the other end again i'll peel this off and i'll peel this off so here what i have is i have a rectangular sheet of plastic as you can see it is a rectangular sheet of plastic silver from inside and the print is on outside now what i do is i just fold it this way fold it one fold in this manner and the other fold in this manner and my dairy milk wrapper is ready so this is the way i package my this uh, dairy milk packages its uh, chocolate inside this uh, wrapper that we have so uh, when we are packaging something what we are basically doing is that it, according to the requirements the packaging differs just like a card a cartoon box uh, we pack in cartoon box in which there we don't want uh, we can have air supply uh, which can pass through the product and the product is not damaged but in fruit products what happens is that if we have air uh, moving out in and out of and uh, in contact with the food product then it might get spoiled so what uh, what they do is that using uh, heat they synchronize uh, they seal it off and we have a sealed uh, chocolate inside our uh, wrapper that we have okay the for next i i told you that i'll show you this cone now this cone can be taken up as any material or say any object that you have here i am taking it as a cap now how this cone came into existence how this has been made so let's see uh we are seeing a division here and there are a few staple pins so i'll just remove the staple pins first this is first staple pin that i have removed i'll remove the next okay now there are a few cell cello tapes that have been uh, stuck here like this so i'll just remove it okay and on top again there is a cello tape that i'll remove i'll just cut it off with a cutter that would be much better so that cone that we had what the cone that we had was basically a segment of radius say this is the this is the radius so this radius segment basically formed an uh arc segment which is there and that when when it is folded and both the ends come into contact it forms a cone that we can see so if i have a cone and i'm said keep please uh, uh in the question i'm instructed to develop the surface of the cone then what do i have to do is i have to develop this segment which is there and this segment would be my uh answer that is there another example uh, that i have brought with me is the dairy milk that i ate it had this silver foiling on it so i framed it into a cylinder now this cylinder as you can see again if i unwrap it then what happens is it gets converted into a rectangle so it is just like if i want a cylinder i should use this rectangle and i should connect both the end points and once i connect both the end points what i have is a cylinder with height h and the diameter of the base uh yeah and the diameter of base which is from this much okay ah now you must be wondering why did i bring this uh pastry box with me so i want to show you two objects two different boxes this is one thing which is there and this is the pastry box that i have okay so i'll say that this box is made exactly out of this and if this is folded properly then i'll get this box 
don't believe me okay let's see this is the box i'll keep it this side and now what i'll do is i'll develop the surface of this now i'll open it this is the first fold that i had so i will unfold it then next is again again i have unfolded it and here is what i have right the same box that i had has been converted into a 2d object that is a single plane now if i want this back into the same i just need to fold it as it was the cuts are there i just need to place them in so today it's like an craft class that we are going through but that is the basic explanation of uh, what is known as development of surfaces so when i have closed this box from the edges that has been folded so this is the box that i have again and from this 2d object i have created a 3d object so this was the motive of bringing this empty pastry box i know it is christmas and its pastry was yummy which was inside so i love it okay now let's uh, know what is parallel line development and what is radial line development this cylinder will come back to the cylinder that i showed you now what happens is in the cylinder this is a cylinder now if i unwrap it it becomes a rectangle so in a rectangle what happens is we can say that it is an integration of lines single lines which have been integrated over length uh, l say if it, if this is a uh, this is line uh, line of length a and this is l so i can say that integration of a over this l gives me this uh, this segment or say not segment this plane which i when i wrap it becomes a cylinder so this is known as parallel line development because all the lines are parallel to each other as you can see these are all parallel to each other so this is known as parallel line development whereas if we head to the radial line development this parallel line development is uh, basically uh, it's in cylinders and it's in prisms these are the two places where we use uh, parallel line development and Well, when we talk about radial line development so radial line development is used in cones uh, which has its slant edge and uh, we have having this cone with us so we will see the how uh, this radial line development and uh, parallel line development differ from each other so this is the cone that i had as i showed you and i uh, un unpacked it and made made a surface out of it so now you can see that this line is at an angle and this if this line is integrated over this theta then what happens then i get this segment whereas in uh, in this cylinder what happened was that if i integrate it over linear length l that that's when when i get this surface which actually creates a cylinder and here what i had to do I have to do is that this line has to keep on rotating in this manner and the integration of the total all the lines that are there at uh, all the positions give me this uh segment which creates the cone that i know that i have shown you okay uh, so let's move on to uh, solve a few examples and uh, let's see that how uh, these segments are actually put on paper so the first question that we have first we'll start with a few simple examples uh the question that is given is develop the lateral surface of hexagonal prism resting on hp on its base with two edges of base parallel to vp take the edge of base equal to 20 mm and height equal to 70 mm first of all let's interpret the question first now it is saying uh, develop the lateral surface of a hexagonal prism now we know a hexagonal prism is what hexagonal prism is hexagonal prism is a hexagon at the base a hexagon at the top and all the uh, six faces join the top and the bottom so that's the hexagonal prism that we have the next what it says is two of its edges are parallel to each other uh, parallel to 
VP. What it wants to say is that when we are drawing the hexagon, that is the plan, that is the top view of this hexagonal prism, then it will have six faces or say six sides. Out of those six sides, two of the sides have to be parallel to VP. So none of them will be per uh, uh, two of them will be parallel to VP. So if we keep in the, it in that way, then we'll have the two faces also parallel to VP. Now, what else information is given to us? The edges are equal to 20 mm and the height is equal to 70 mm. Now, for development of surface problems, we are not going to draw line XY. Now, when we are drawing the uh, solution in uh, uh, first angle, then the top view will be below the front view means front view will be at the top and the uh, top view will be at the bottom and we are drawing when we are drawing it in third angle then what happens is the front view comes down and the top view moves upwards so remembering this we'll be solving all the problems in first angle so let's start i will not be drawing line x y here because as i said that uh, uh, in this we don't require this line x y so let's get on paper problem number one so first what we need to draw is according to the question we have a hexagonal prism so the first thing that we should uh, do is we should draw the front view and the top view of the hexagonal prism okay now First of all, uh, I'm drawing the top view, that is, I'll draw a top view on the bottom side of the paper. First, uh, now the side is given as uh, 20 mm, so that is equivalent to 2 centimeters. So I'll dr start drawing this by 2 mm. Now the question arises, why did I draw a horizontal line straight away? The point is that this uh, face, the, this side, and the side which is exactly below it that will also be a straight line are parallel to VP because we know that this line is VP so that is why I have drawn this uh, face here so that I can show that this uh, side is parallel to VP and the side exactly opposite to it will also be parallel to VP I am just uh, drawing